we know that, gene expression in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes involve two main steps. The first step is known as, transcription. In this process, the information in a gene or, a DNA segment is copied into a complementary RNA sequence. Thus, in simple words, transcription means RNA synthesis. The second step is known as, translation. During translation, the RNA sequence is used to create the amino acid sequence of a polypeptide. But, the process of gene expression in prokaryotes and eukaryotes is not exactly same. This is because of the differences in their cellular structure. Let's understand how. As you can see here, in prokaryotes, membrane-bound nucleus is absent. Therefore in prokaryotes, both transcription and translation occur in the same cellular compartment. Here, the RNA produced by transcription is the actual messenger RNA that guides protein synthesis. Now look at the case of eukaryotes. The main feature of eukaryotic cellular structure is compartmentalization. In eukaryotes, transcription and translation occur in different compartments of the cell. Transcription occurs in the nucleus. And translation occurs in the cytoplasm. Another major difference is that, in eukaryotes the RNA synthesized as a result of transcription is not actual mRNA. The single strand of RNA synthesized in the process of transcription is known as primary transcript or pre-mRNA. This pre-mRNA undergo processing before translation to form mature mRNA. Now question here is, why this RNA processing is required in eukaryotic cells? The answer is, most of the eukaryotic genes are made up of exons and introns. Exon stands for expressed region. It is the coding region of eukaryotic gene. These coding regions are eventually translated as proteins. But coding regions or exons of eukaryotic genes are interrupted by non-coding regions. These non-coding regions are known as introns. Intron stand for intervening region. When transcription of the eukaryotic gene occurs, RNA is produced. This RNA is complementary to the DNA sequence except that, in place of thymine, uracil is added. This means, RNA sequence will also contain the non-coding regions or introns. This RNA is known as primary transcript or pre-mRNA. It contains interrupted genetic message. Mature mRNA is formed by removal of introns and joining of exons in the correct order. Thus, eukaryotic gene expression requires RNA processing to form mature messenger RNA. This mRNA contains the uninterrupted genetic message. All this processing takes place before mRNA leaves the nucleus. RNA processing in the nucleus consists of several modifications of pre-mRNA. Both the ends of pre-mRNA are modified. 5' prime cap is added at the 5' prime end of pre-mRNA and a poly A tail is added to the 3' prime end of the RNA sequence. Introns are removed, and exons are joined together. This process is known as RNA splicing. In this lecture, we will focus on RNA splicing or, pre-mRNA splicing. Let's say this is the primary transcript after the transcription process. It will contain exons and introns. The main role in RNA splicing is played by exon-intron junctions of pre-mRNA. Now, what is so special about these exon-intron junctions? 
these junctions have highly conserved nucleotides. In case of mammals, the 5' end of each intron almost always has GU nucleotides. And the 3' end of each intron has AG nucleotides. These sites on each intron are known as 5' splice site and 3' splice site. Besides these two sites, there is another invariant site in each intron. This site is 15 to 45 nucleotide upstream of 3' splice site. It contains adenine. This site in intron is known as branch point or branch site. Now let's talk about the cellular machinery that carries out the process of RNA splicing. Pre-mRNA splicing is carried out by a cellular machinery known as spliceosome. Spliceosome recognizes the conserved sequences at the splice sites. Spliceosome is a complicated intracellular machine. It is a set of RNA protein complexes. Each RNA protein complex is made up of a small nuclear RNA, and proteins. This RNA complex is known as small nuclear ribonuclear proteins abbreviated as SNRNP, and pronounced as SNRP. So, spliceosome is made up of SNRPs. The main SNRPs which constitute spliceosome are, U1, U2, U5 and U4 U6. U4 and U6 occur in pair. In other words, they are bound together. So, now we are familiar with the splice sites in introns of pre-mRNA, and the spliceosome. Let's understand the steps involved in the splicing pathway. First step involves the SNRPs U1 and U2. U1 binds to the 5' splice site of the intron. This binding is due to base pairing between the U1 RNA and the 5' end of intron. U2 binds to the A residue at the branch site. In the second step, the remaining SNRPs, that is, U5 and U4 U6 join the already bound U1 and U2. Thus, spliceosome is now assembled. Next, spliceosome loops out the intron and bring the two exon ends close together. In the third step, U1 and U4 are expelled. U6 is paired with both 5' splice site and U2. In the fourth step, the 5' end of intron is cleaved, and it attaches to the branch point that is, to the adenine of the intron. In the final step, the 3' end of the intron is cleaved and, exons join together. Intron is released as a lariat. The intron is called a lariat structure as it has a stem and a loop. It resembles the shape of cowboy's lariat. Intron is degraded by enzymes. And SNRPs are used in other splicing reactions. This whole process of pre-mRNA splicing is repeated for other exons and introns within the primary transcript. So, that's all in today's lecture. Please don't forget to subscribe this channel. If these videos are helpful to you, like them and share them. Also, let me know your feedback about these videos through your comments below. Thank you for watching.